Hi, fantastic teachers. This is Nadej Sezana speaking. To help busy teachers stop stress eating one irresistible food at a time without being miserable. Do you sometimes tell yourself, well, I wish it was half term already? <laughs> or maybe, like many of my clients, I want to stop this stress eating habits right now. And if so, nothing's gone wrong. So today I want to share with you three ways that may surprise you to actually get to your goal faster. The three benefits of getting to your goal faster are that first, you can truly enjoy your food with zero guilt. And second, you can also enjoy the impact of not overeating. That is to say, you'll have more energy, you'll fit into smaller clothes, you'll be more flexible. And the third one, the third benefit is that you can start enjoying that process right now. Yes, who knew? <laughs> So maybe you've noticed that maybe in the past week you've overeaten two, three, four more times than this. Okay, you've noticed that. And when you remember your behavior from last week, you may tell yourself, some people do, well, I want to stop this stress eating habit right now. And perhaps you're noticing how impatient that thought makes you feel. I want to stop this stress eating habit right now. And what's interesting is what we do when we feel impatient. So if you're anything like me or like my client, when we feel impatient, we tend to fidget. That is to say, I tend to twist my hair or um, move, move around instead of really enjoying the process, however slow it might seem. That's one thing I do. Another thing that I tend to do when I'm feeling impatient is that I just focus on what's still missing. I focus on the gap, what's not here yet. With this story that it should be here right now, right? Instead of focusing on what I've gained or the lessons I've learned or the progress I've made. And the third thing that I tend to do when I'm feeling impatient, and I'd be curious to know what you do, if that's something that you do too when you're feeling impatient, is that I don't take the time to reflect and turn past mistakes maybe into lessons so that I don't repeat them endlessly. So what is the impact of this behavior on myself? What is this impact of this behavior on my client when they notice that they behave this way? Well, simply put, then they're making it less likely to stop stress eating right now or even soon. What's really interesting in that story is that the impatient is not coming from the fact that maybe last week you overate, you stress ate again, right? The fact that you eat, whether it's too much, too little, just enough last week, cannot make you feel impatient today, right? Even if you have a goal of no longer responding to the cravings for food, right? The fact that you eat this amount last week cannot make you feel impatient today, right? Whatever you did or didn't do last week cannot make you feel any feeling right now, right? Unless you're telling yourself, as some of my clients do, well, I want to stop this stress eating right now. This is actually the thought that's making them feel impatient. It's not what happened last week. It's their interpretation of the thought. I want to stop this stress eating habit right now. And what's really ironic is that this thought, I want to stop the stress eating habit right now, is actually what's keeping them stuck in that behavior because from impatience, we don't learn anything. We keep on repeating the same loop, same loop again and again, wishing it was different, but not taking any action, not taking any step, not owning our responsibility into changing the way things are. And so let's focus on the mistakes that this thought, I want to stop this stress eating habit right now, includes, contains, right? So the first one, it's a sneaky one because it sounds like something really ben benign or innocent or even good for us that I want to. The desire seems like a nice wish. And that's often what I recommend to my clients. Let's turn uh, pressure uh, into desire so that it's feel, it feels much better. Except that I'm wondering if under this, I want to stop this stress eating ha habit right now, 
there's not a form of entitlement. I should, I should have stopped right now because I've made the effort. So come on, I should be rewarded. Or if it's not some form of constraint or even no pressure, I have to, right? Um, and in that case, pressure or entitlement never, unfortunately, gets us what we want. So when we feel entitled to a result, like not stress eating anymore, we create actually the opposite. So it's really not fun. That's the first thing. The second thing is that um, there's a lot of negativity. I want to stop this stress eating habit right now. It sounds as if nothing's good in this habit. And it's true that we can very well focus on the negative, on uh, the problem, the, the specific repercussions that this type of behavior has on us. We know it. We know the weight gain. We know the lack of mobility. We know the bigger clothes. We know the health issues. We know all this. So we tend to focus on the negative, which is very natural, but it's not serving us because if we stay focused like this on the negative, we can't see what we can learn from this. And stop, I wish, I want to stop this stress eating habit right now. Stop seems to imply that diminishing, reducing is not enough, which can be, you know, debated, debated that it should absolutely be over completely, right? So it's this idea that it should be eradicated, eliminated completely, which doesn't give us much room to move from learning, from stress eating, to learning how not to, right? It's as if it's a switch, what I often like to call the switch. It's either, either I'm stress eating, either I stop. But there's no room in between to learn what to do. And also notice the third mistake in that sentence, which is right now. It implies it's urgent. It implies there's no time to waste. Um, as if it was impossible, unbearable, to stay in the present moment. But why? What's so uncomfortable or painful about it? And is it true? that is really uncomfortable, painful to be stress eating. And of course, part of it is true, but also maybe not as much as we want to believe. And maybe if we are stress eating, it's because we have something to learn right now, thanks to that. However mind-blowing it may sound, but really, truly, stress eating could be a solution right now to something that we don't want to feel, to an emotion we don't want to feel. Right? And there's something to learn here, but we just want to move to the better place, as if there was actually a better place. So as always, what I like to do is focus on three steps. The first one is to notice. So do you ever think that thought or a similar one that creates that feeling of impatience, right? If so, when? When do you feel impatient? Or where do you feel impatient? Is there a particular situation where you feel impatient? And if so, what's going on? Right? So that's the first thing. Notice. Collect data where you would be in that situation and in that frame of mind. The second one, the second step, the second phase is always to question. Why the rush? How do you think you'll feel when you no longer stress it? It's excellent information, so please write it down, because we know that we always tend to do something in order for us to feel a certain way, right? So we want to stop stress eating so that we feel dot, dot, dot. So fill in the blank and find out what you want to feel and what you think you will feel once you've stopped stress eating. It's priceless information. And the third step, as always, is to decide. So a question you could ask yourself is, what? why are you not feeling this way right now? This feeling you want to feel once you've stopped stress eating, why can't you feel it now? What's preventing you from feeling this way, whether it's confident or comfortable or happy? What's in the way? What's preventing you from feeling that way right now, whether you're stress eating or not? And as usual, I like to offer you three thoughts to move a little bit away from this thought that's probably not serving us, which is, I want to stop this stress eating habit right now. So here's the first one. I may be wrong about there being better than here, because notice that in that sentence, I want to stop stress eating, this stress eating habit right now. It's as if right now it's unbearable, but there, once it's it's done, once it's forgotten, when it's a thing of the past, everything will be fa fabulous, which may be a lie. So what if I was wrong about there 
being better than here. A second thought that you could be willing to think is, what if there was actually as good as here and vice versa, right? And a third thought that you could choose to think if you want to is, I truly want to enjoy the process from here to there, right? Ask yourself what it would be like. Try to find ways that, yes, it could be enjoyable. And to end this video, I wanted to share with you an amazing free offer. I'm currently testing, experimenting, playing with a stress eating freedom call so that in one hour you'll discover the four critical mistakes that maybe you're doing and that keep you trapped in the stress eating cycle and especially how to overcome them. I'm also going to share with you a revolutionary tool to stop letting stress control your food choices and start taking control of your health and achieve sustainable, lasting success. And the third thing is that I'm going to give you a personalized action plan tailored to your specific needs to conquer stress eating once and for all. So if you're interested or if you know somebody who is interested, please use this link to book your free call. Let's get rid of stress eating together. I wish you a very good day. Bye.